where does it where's the origin of shamanism is it a certain country certain culture uh i don't think anybody knows it's more uh, of an archetype exactly because, because in different tribes there were native americans in the u.s and then the tribes in you know all over the world have, have had this in the indigenous tribes have had this idea of a shaman or, or a medicine leader or something the healer of the group. One of, one of the oldest cave paintings found uh, in France or, or Spain, I can't remember which one, but one of the oldest ones is this image of a shaman dancing. And we know he's a shaman because he's wearing antlers. Mm. And uh, he appears to be dancing or moving uh, like the animal. Mm -hmm. And that that's one of the characteristics of the shaman, uh, mm. that connection with nature and animal life. Uh, and so it goes back to our ancient prehistory. So, so yeah, I think in, in going down to some of these universal principles, we, we start to kind of see what the archetype is talking about. Okay. Let's go. Number one. So number one, shamans <laughs> experience a calling. Ah, so it's kind of like a coach even, you know, a coach or a therapist or a healer. Yeah. You have this calling to help others. And they, it's kind of um, every story, like origin story of s these great, uh, even people that are modern gurus, they always have this story where they have a calling, you know, they have a wake up call. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that what you're saying? They kind of feel it's not. It finds the calling finds them. They don't just decide. Oh, I want to be. A, I want to be a coach. <laughs> oh, like people that don't come to us to be a coach because they decide. Oh, that looks like a good, good. You know, I, I should do that. That's just an option for a, a career. It's like they have a calling. It's that kind of um, inner awakening of something deep within them. Right. Um that idea of it chooses you mm -hmm. you don't really choose it that's and what, you resist it <laughs> yes that's what yeah. it's talking about that you don't really have a choice it's mm. kind of uh, picked you to do this this uh, separate journey from the ordinary life and you either submit or resist you know you mm -hmm. either say okay i'm going to go along with this or you resist and uh you know, in um, Campbell's uh, hero's journey, there's that part of resisting the call. Mm -hmm. Where answer the call, you resist it. Yeah, you get the call. You did you're gonna pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, uh, yeah, this experience of a calling. Um, you know, a lot of people sometimes they try to force themselves into a career mm -hmm. that they're not really. That isn't their calling. And so uh, I know a lot of people that they do what their parents told them to do. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a uh, be you know accountant, and do what I did, and and or get a job at the factory, or do you know the things that I did, and this is what works. And then there's this other calling within you. So shamanism is a calling that you can't just decide. Ooh, that person, like I want to be like Deepak Chopra, or yeah, I want to be a shaman, and you just decide. It's something yeah. that comes from within you. Well, if you look it at picks you. Yeah, some anthropologists, of course, study, study different cultures and, and have documented a lot of this stuff. What they find is often it, there's an illness. There's a, a type of uh, madness that mm. uh, befalls the person. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they go through that dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes very early as mm -hmm. children, they mm -hmm. start to hear voices. They, mm -hmm. they experience something out of the ordinary mm -hmm. that's that signals them out as oh this person is not meant to be just part of the everyday tribe but is um is going to be trained by the shamans mm. in the tribe I, even in buddhism uh, uh, the the lamas they they the boy is the one kid out of the family is chosen to leave the family unit and go study with the monks so that kind of leaving the ordinary world. Yeah. And so, uh, and I, I think I want to talk about that just a little bit more because it is the calling. That's why we resist the call because we have to leave that ordinary world. We have to leave yeah. our friends and our the way things were in the comfort zone that we have. And we have to put, and even in the modern world, we have to put ourselves out there. We have to market ourselves and we have to... Um, uh, risk rejection, risk, you know, abandonment from people or 
um, being more exposed in the world. And the shaman, uh, you know, the village well, looked toward the shaman. It was a big responsibility. To, when is it, the rain going to come? When is a good time to plant the crops? Someone's sick, you got to save them. And it was like kind of like that responsibility that you have to take on. 